Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Over the last couple of years I've bought and sold and traded and flipped and reviewed a whole bunch of watches. Very few of them have managed to capture my heart quite like the Vostok Amphibia. Now these things have always had a real cult following. I think the cult just found its newest member. If you watched my unboxing video, I was like, no, no, I'm not going to modify it. Why would I spend more money on a $60 watch? Two days later, I bought a bezel. Five days later, I bought a strap. Ten days later, I bought a crown. I'm going to do a little bit of a, a modding workshop video on this one. Be really interested to see how easy these watches are to play around with. But today, before I start to modify it, let's flip the camera and get into the full review. Okay, the legendary Vostok Amphibia. Now, I bought this one on eBay. I bought it from a very pleasant chap called Nikolai at Moscow Time Sellers. Cost me 65 US dollars and that was it, shipped to Australia. Plenty of other different outlets though you can buy and plenty of different models to choose from. All of them feature one of the most heinous and hideous bracelets known to man. This thing is legendary for pulling the hairs off your arms. It didn't last the unboxing. Uh, why would you persevere? Only a masochist would try and wear this one. It's sharp, it's nasty, it's difficult to engage and disengage and you can buy something infinitely better on eBay for two dollars so why wouldn't you? You're certainly not buying this one for the bracelet, nor for the end links. They look more like paper clips than end links. But the watch itself, just so charming. Now, as I said, lots and lots of these ones available. This one has the model number 710634. All of them have these six digit derivations. The first two numbers denote the case shape. This cushion case is known as the ministry case also has those exposed lugs there as opposed to the concealed lugs of some of the others. Uh, the zero, the third digit, refers to the case material, stainless steel in this case. Uh, the crown and bezel actually though are chromed brass. And the last three digits, the 634 in this case, refers to the dial. This one, the famous scuba dude in black uh, with Arabics at 12, 6 and 9. Now, without turning this review into a history lesson, it is, however, nice to go back and get a little bit of the backstory of this watch because it is a fantastic story. Uh, Vostok were the official suppliers to the Soviet military in the mid-1960s, and in 1967, they were commissioned to create a new dive watch that was capable of withstanding pressures at 200 meters. The caveat was though that they had to use some fairly perfunctory Russian style manufacturing equipment. Uh, they couldn't therefore come up with the strong case design to ape the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms and Rolex Abarnas, which were the contemporary Western dive watches of the day. They created something a little bit different. They created a watch that actually gets more waterproof the more water pressure is put on it. it does this in two key ways. That fabulous domed acrylic crystal there actually pushes into the case the more pressure is put on it, creating a better seal with the case than at sea level. Similarly, two-piece case back, uh, one top there and another little metal little ring. Now the rubber underneath that, you're not twisting that down, you're not applying uh, lateral shear pressure when you're tightening the case back, so you're less likely to damage the O-ring and as a result that case back when there's more water pressure applied to it, again, it fits better onto the rubber o-ring, creating a better seal. We've got a screw down crown for good measure. So dimensions on this one, this ministry case model, 40 millimeter case diameter, only 45 millimeter lug to lug though. So this watch wears fantastically. I think one of the reasons that I've really been enjoying it. 22 mil lug width, quite thick, 15 mils. Very thick actually. Uh, considering the short lug to lug. And on this leather strap, coming in at only 82 grams, another reason why I've really enjoyed wearing this watch. It's been getting a disproportionate amount of wrist time because it's such a nice, light and comfortable watch for everyday use. So the movement in this is the 2415B, uh, in-house, made by Vostok, beats at just under 20,000 vibrations per hour, so you get somewhere between five and six ticks per second 
on that little second hand there. 31 hours of power when fully wound. Can be manually wound, I'll show you that in a minute. So how has this one been performing for me? Uh, apparently the tolerances are minus 20 to plus 40. A lot of people say their Vostoks run fast, they run about plus 30. I'll pop up uh, my first timing screen there. Oh, I thought I was doing so well. I thought I'd cracked it. I thought I'd got a really good one. Ran it for a few days and it was looking great. It was looking about plus five. Then I just had too many watches on the go. Let this one run out of juice. And I'll pop up the second screen there. And this is how it's been running recently. Uh, minus 30 average. Do you know what? If this was a Seiko, I'd be jumping up and down. But I really don't care. I really don't care. It's probably not going to be an everyday watch for me, and even if it was, you get well used to that. You get well used to adjusting it a couple of times a day. This watch is just so damn charming, I can forgive its inaccuracies. Now another one of the idiosyncrasies of this watch is the crown. If I unscrew it here, it oh, very satisfying to hand wind at the first stop there. Very, very satisfying. Slightly noisy, uh, but it feels really good. But the crown doesn't feel like it's attached to the crown stem because it isn't. You need to pull that all the way out and there you are, that's it actually attached to the movement. The idea being is that when the crown is screwed down, you give it a proper whack, it won't damage the crown stem. You'll still be able to, to use the watch. And people moan about the lack of quick date, but there is another little quirk with this one. I've never actually tried it, so let's see if it works. If you wind it on there we are you heard and saw the date flick if you go past the one and then apparently if you go back to about the eight and then roll it again forward yeah there we are we've turned over the date to 20. so it's a little bit of a hack there uh, so to speak you can kind of half set the date quickly and we roll over to 21. there we are you can also just about hack the movement. As you see there, I've got just the right amount of pressure there that the second hand isn't turning. And if I release the pressure, it starts the movement once more. So again, idiosyncrasies, little quirks with this watch, but it just adds to the charm. I'm totally in love with this thing, already looking for my second Vostok. That's it on my seven inch wrist. I think it sits just beautifully. It's a really comfortable watch, as I said, to wear. Love the cushion case, I think it suits the, the overall feel of the watch. Plenty of other case options available though, some slightly smaller than this with 18mm lugs. If you've got a smaller than 7 inch wrist, I would recommend maybe looking at one of those. As I said, I think this thing is a bit of a strap monster, as I will now demonstrate. Here it is on a $2 rubber strap from eBay. The clasps on these aren't amazing, but the rubber is very comfortable. If you're on a super tight budget, these come highly recommended. I've fitted them to a number of different watches. Here it is on a NATO strap. I don't personally go in for NATO straps all that much. Plus with 15 mil, uh, already 15 mil thick, I think it sits a little too high off the wrist, but it certainly is in keeping with the military aesthetic. I've actually ordered a two piece Zulu for this one when I do my little mod video when I replace the bezel and the crown. And finally, there it is on a shark mesh. Now maybe I have joined the cult, but I think it looks great on everything. Just a really flexible, adaptable watch. I think the 22 mil lug widths really suit the overall aesthetic of this timepiece. I think I'm just a little bit in love, but that's okay. It's okay to be in love with a watch, isn't it? Just looks great. And the loom isn't bad either. I'll pop up a loom shot. Perfectly serviceable, doesn't last the duration of the night, but you get a good few hours of reasonable, reasonable loom from there as well. So just a final close up of the watch before we go today. Quick look at the case back, just says amphibia there and 200 meters. And on that dial, the famous little scuba dude there. You can get these in kind of blue, green. I just went for the plain black. Love the handset as well. Very nice little arrow there, just says made in Russia and the, the B for Vostok on the dial just above the six. So there you have it, the Vostok Amphibia. Charming, characterful and cheap. What a combination. I'm about to buy my second. I think I've joined the cult. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.